Welcome in to this episode of the Bass Pro Shops Fisherman's Handbook. Today, host Wade Middleton is fishing during the springtime on a lake full of flooded timber and vegetation. Fish are in all three phases of the spawn, and they're keyed in on a swim jig. You know, right now we're doing water temperature 65-ish range, and uh, there's fish that have already spawned because water temperature's been as high as 70, and there's fish just moving up to spawn on this next full moon. And basically what we've got is a mix of fish that could be all the way to that bank where they're almost impossible to get to, and some that are out here in this heavier timber that is literally surrounded by hydrilla. And there's a lot of different ways that you can fish some of this cover but with the way it's set up right now with the wind, I think a swim jig really sets up nicely to be able to work through the tops of some of the scattered hardwoods out here. And as it goes by these holes in the grass, we're in and around that timber, the fish are just gonna aggressively react to the bait coming by their head. I mean, they don't even know why sometimes. They're just like, man, that bait is, there's a bluegill going zipping by, I'm gonna eat it. Good one. Golly, come out of there. Golly. You know, that's why a swim jig is so effective. You can see that brush right there. I just reeled it through that four trees. There are little forks in the tree right there. And bam, I mean, he just come up and smashed it right away. You know, that's a, that's a good aggressive bite. And there's been a lot of boats come through here a lot of times with spinner baits. And it's just a different look. That's all that it provides. Just provides a different look to everything you're doing. You know, for me, I, there's a lot of different uh, nuances to fishing a swim jig. Uh, you know, ma matching up a bluegill uh, type bait in and around and just after the spawn is, is one of my favorite techniques around hardwood, around grass, around any, you know, any type of brushy cover, lily pads, whatever it may be. And, it, you know, the technique and the mindset is you're throwing past that target and you are you begin the retrieve and it's a, a fairly steady fairly fast retrieve with pumping the rod throwing some slack in there getting that getting that skirt to kind of do like this and as it goes by it's just a pure reaction strike i mean if you're looking for a tree to reel a bait to that's about as good a one as you're going to find sometimes you know like there was a lot of grass on this side of it sometimes you got to make multiple casts to a target like this to find where that fish is setting to get him to bite. Sometimes you can just reel it through there one time and get that bite. So you just kind of got to let the fish tell you what they want. Are they the front, back, side, middle, or are they even there? Looks like he's not even there. God, what a strike. God, the fish jumped all the way out of the water. That is swim jig fishing right there. Golly. Like I was talking about, I made five casts of that tree, made one to that one, and he just sharked out of the water for it. That is so cool. What a bite. What a bite. Big old chunky fish right there. Big old chunky fish. Like I was saying when we came by that other tree, you perfect looking tree. Made four or five casts to it, nothing there. Made a cast to the right hand side of that tree right there. That fish jumped over the over the branch basically to get that get that bait. And you know this type of a bait, this swim jig coming through and around targets, we've got a mix of grass and, and timber here. You can just fish it so effectively. Following this quick break, Wade continues to discuss the ins and outs of fishing a swim jig. Stay tuned to find out more of his little secrets as we go in depth about this particular bait. We know if you found one crappie, you may have found a thousand. We know the joy of getting your boots back in the mud. We know the journey can be more rewarding than the destination. We know the great outdoors. We love the great outdoors. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Stop by today for huge savings on the gear you need and the brand you trust. Plus, free two-day shipping at BassPro.com and Cabela's.com. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. 
leading the industry for over 50 years. These rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z Series, unleash next level performance. Yamaha Outboards, reliability starts here. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. And by Yamaha Marine, reliability starts here. When you look at a swim jig, this is the secret lure swim jig, and they've got three different ones. They've got one for the north, one for the south, and then really a, a real heavy duty one. Multitude of different weight sizes as well to be able to allow you to mix up uh, you know your presentations right now there's a lot of grass uh, underneath the water right here so I'm trying to r basically reel one that's a little bit lighter and I, I really am kind of fishing it like a lot of traditional people would fish an old school spinner bait or something like that but you've got a total different look for the fish to want to be able to to bite it and react to it um, trailer wise I mean You've got a multitude of different trailers that you can put on here. I'm actually using a swim bait trailer right here from Big Bite Baits that kind of basically mimics a bluegill and gives it a nice little tail kick coming through here as you go along. And you've got a weed guard as well to kind of protect that heavy duty hook. And you know, down here, I want as big a hook as I possibly can. Secret Lures has a wide range of uh, swim jigs. And in their mindset was, was an understanding when they set out to design a swim jig to build a swim jig that, that suits the people up north, to the people down south, to the people that want to fish a super line, the people that want to use a finesse uh, type uh, swim jig. And by that, what they've done is, is gone out and created three different sizes of, of swim jigs as far as your weights and chosen three different hooks basically so that uh, depending on the exact line that you're using, the exact technique location wise that you're using with your swim jig, they built a swim jig exactly to cover your needs. So I think a really key part of a good swim jig is how your trailer is going to be attached on and on this secret lures swim bait right here you, you can see the twin forks right here which will allow my swim bait or any type of trailer to be able to stay on and you know trailer wise there's a lot of different choices uh, that you can use this particular one here is a a swim bait from Big Bite Baits. I don't like a trailer in this type of cover that has too many appendages because what will happen is you're casting a lot of times of those will, will hang up on it and that, and that can even happen with your jig skirt which is the reason I kind of trimmed this one up a little bit but the weed guard here also will help deflect some of that cover as the bait is, is coming through. And if you look at the jig, the line tie is really key. You know, there's so many different jigs available on the market right now, but you need a, a jig and a line tie, in my opinion, that really kind of allow the bait to come through the water towards you and not be too high or too, uh, you know, up on top. And high, I mean, would be right in here, more like what you'd have with a flipping jig, so that the bait will come through at a level position like you're retrieving it. Uh, without jumping totally out of the water or wanting to nose dive down. You want it to come through the water column exactly, you know, as level as you possibly can. There he is. Golly, that fish has just annihilated it. Got him right in the brush. <clears throat> Another good one out of the hardwoods. He has that swim bait all the way down in there. Look at that. Such a great dynamic bait for fishing in this type of cover. Just a steady retrieve, a little pumping action, keep that skirt moving. Water temperature over 60, I mean, it is a dynamite way to catch a lot of fish. You know, and for me, I think rod selection is as important in this as anything. Um, I do not recommend a rod over seven foot two. I like a six nine or a seven one. This is actually a six foot nine medium heavy right here, which I think is absolutely perfect for this type of fishing. Uh, too big a rod, your accuracy really goes down and an accurate cast in and around this cover is, is really important. For me, maximum lengthwise, seven foot one would be a max. Nothing really, really light. This is not a light 
technique, you know, as far as light actions, light lines, you need something that's got some power, something you can be able to control these fish, but have a tip that's going to allow you to be able to, to throw the bait accurately. Reel-wise, a fast reel. This is not something that for the six to six, you know, point three to one type reels. This is there something you want those eight three to one type reels that are going to reel and, and gather a lot of line with each crank. When it comes to swim jig fishing, um, I try to keep it fairly simple. There's four or five colors that really work for me that mimic uh, your, kind of your bluegills and your shad. And as long as I can kind of match those colors up, I pretty much have what I'm looking for. Uh, weight sizes, a quarter to half ounce is about, a half ounce is really about as big as I'll go and a quarter is about as light as I'll go. Finally, I think line choices are really, really key and really, really important. And, and it's got to match the location and the time of the year and the baits that you're throwing a lot of times. Uh, there are definitely times that like a 16 pound test uh, fluorocarbon is really going to pay off, uh, like when you're fishing around docks or something like that. But if I'm around heavy cover, uh, timber, brush, grass, things like that, 20 pound Sunline Sniper is going to be a minimum for me. And I will even take it all the way up to the 30 to 50 pound Sunline FX Braid if I'm throwing a swim jig in around lily pads or very heavy, heavy, heavy cover where I know I'm going to be targeting fish five pounds or more. Come out here in the creek edge. You know, this is such a fun technique to generate bites in so many different manners. And when you get a day that you think the fish are really aggressive, the old swim jig it really can pay off in a lot of good bites and some giants as well. And next on the Fisherman's Handbook, Post Wade Middleton decides to change things up a little bit and try one of his most favorite techniques to fish around the spawn. Keep it programmed right here to learn all about the Wacky Rig. What are them sons of fishies up to now? Fellas, I give you the force trolling motor. It is the most powerful, the most efficient on the water. Yep, most powerful. We're really in trouble now. And it's quiet, too. You can't swim here. What a dumb bass. At the pinnacle of super high output, four-stroke outboard performance, you'll find Yamaha VMAX SHO, Yamaha's game-changing SHO technology. From exhilarating V6 models to the sleek inline fours, there's a VMAX SHO for everything from bass to bonefish. It's an extended family of four strokes, engineered for lightweight, inspiring performance, and rock solid reliability. Discover VMAX SHO and elevate your expectations. We demand a lot from the products that we use on our adventures around the world. When it comes to keeping things seriously cold, we rely on Angle Coolers, who have for over 50 years kept things cold. Angle Coolers, the original high-performance cooler. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Engel, the original high-performance cooler. Sunline America, the strength to guarantee your confidence. And by Secret Lures, the secret is out. Yeah, I think a lot of times when people go fishing, they just simply want to get a lot of bites. And one of the best ways to get a lot of bites is throwing a, a weightless or a as close to weightless as you can, soft plastic stick bait or a finesse worm. And there's a lot of different ways that you can fish the bait. You know, you can fish it Texas rigged, uh, just, you know, straight with a, with a hook on there. And you can fish it wacky style. You can fish it some varieties of wacky style. Uh, you can, you know, put a heavier weight on there. A lot of guys do that, but 
I think if you're just really trying to get bites, fishing it as, as weightless as you can, on as light a line as you can, will get you some bites on about every lake in, in the United States at any given time. I may have one that just bit it, I don't know. Yep. Not very big, but come here. You know, that right there, I literally was still in rusty. The camera guy said, I think one just bit. I didn't ever, I never felt the fish. I just saw a little bit of a swirl and it's it's fairly shallow back here. And a lot of times when you start fishing, you know, for fun into the backs of some of these pockets, you know, you'll find a lot of fish that size that'll just be piled up in little schools. You'll see them when you get over them. And uh, it's really pretty neat, but I never felt that bite. No, not at all. He just choop, out and hit the water. Let's see if he's got a buddy. You know, there's a lot of different ways to rig soft plastics when you're fishing them uh, the way we are right now, which is, you know, mostly very, very lightweight. Uh, Texas rigging it for the most part, using a spinning rod, uh, kind of just, just trying to generate a lot of bites. It's a phenomenal way to catch a lot of fish and, and some big ones. It's a proven technique all over the nation. And when you're fishing this way, uh, you know, a couple of different choices. You've got your traditional baits right here. This is a, you know, a, a basically a big bite baits trick stick. And um, then we've, we've got a finesse worm here as, as well. And both of them can be rigged the same ways, but there's also a few little tricks that you can do to them. Uh, for instance, this one here, if you decided to fish it wacky, which is very common, already has a, uh, has a ring built into it. You can see the, the ring right here. I'm going to pull it out, but it's already embedded into the bait right here so that you're not you know, tearing every bait every time you make a cast. And you can actually fish it with a small little weighted jig head like I've got here. This is a Secret Lures MVP. Uh, wacky rig hook right here. You could use a, a traditional trocar type hook and do the do the same thing without a weight by just but just running it through the little ring right there and then you're casting it out and letting it fall. Uh, whether you add a little weight to the nose or on this rig or no weight at all or you go with this particular hook and weight system right here and, and what that does is provide that style of a wacky rig, rig presentation that's so popular and has caught so many fish all over the place. Another very popular way to rig them uh, is, is basically like I've been doing today. And I'm actually using a bigger hook here for demonstration purposes uh, so you'll be able to see it. I prefer a one-aught hook. This is actually a, a two-aught trocar big nasty which will work for this as well. But I run it into the middle like that and then I'll turn it like this. And this is a technique that Crete really showed me and kind of refined for me. And then I'll bury everything in like that. And then I put a, a small little nail weight right in here uh, to give it a little bit of weight and it'll kind of fall down and, and really has a great presentation. I can skip it up around docks, fish it around any kind of vegetation, any kind of brush, and it, and it really works uh, perfect for me. And uh, we'll perform in a lot of different situations. And, and the technique, like I've said and like I've demonstrated, I want to throw it out. I want a bow in my line. I want to, I want to not move it as much, if any, that I can. I want it to sit there. I want it to marinate. The more I move it, more often than not, the less bites I'm going to get. I want to throw it out, let the bait do its thing, let it subtly fall to the bottom, and let it sit there for a second. Let that bass go over and take a peek at it, suck it in, start swimming off. Then you set the hook and you got it. There's one. Goodness gracious, this guy's mean here. Oh yeah. Look at that. Is that not fun? It's a good fish right there. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Come here. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. That is so fun. I love the colors on these fish when they get down here in that clear green water like that. I let him go. That's so fun. Just a little tick, a little tick. You go back, grow up, somebody else will have some fun catching you as well. I gotta say, if a guy's wanting to get some bites, 
I, you see me throw rigs like this a lot with just a, a hook, a little nail weight, a finesse worm, a little bitty one, trick worm type deal, and and I just I throw it out with on a spinning rod with braided line, and it gets bites every time. And if you want to go get some bites, which is what fishing is supposed to be about, that's certainly one way to get them. See if we can't catch another one. We've reached our final break in this episode. On the other side, Wade wraps up this show by catching a few more fish on the trusty wacky rig. We'll be right back. You know that guy that's always bringing in big ones from offshore? He's got secret lures. That guy that can pull out a spinning rod and start catching them when you can't buy a bite. He's got secret lures. What about that guy that can follow you down the bank and catch what you left behind? He's got secret lures. Oh, yeah, good one. If you're ready to be that guy, get your secret lures today at secretlures.com. When you spray on a layer of Sawyer's Permethrin Insect Repellent, you've just sprayed on adventure. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. Probably one of the number one questions I get, you know, what line do I use? That's a big debate. For every tour out there, everybody's debating which line. I choose the simple side. My choice of line is sunline. And my favorite lines to use is sunline. How all can you use it? Anywhere you want to. Anywhere there's water and bass, it's good. Walleye, catfish, trout, speckled trout, know, sharks. There we go. Uh, I don't say this unless I think it's true, but honestly, it's the best in the market. The Fisherman's Handbook is brought to you in part by Sawyer Products. We keep you outdoors. Big Bite Baits, designed to bring the big bite to your line. And by Wiley X. Go confidently. You know, there's solid hydrilla all the way around this spot we're fishing right now. This is really the only way to fish in here weightless. And I say weightless, I am using a small nail in here, but not your traditional Texas rig or, you know, a bullet weight on front or anything. And I do it just because I can feel the bait a little better than I can if I just fished it without anything. And I can cast it a little better with the wind and now we've pretty much lost our wind. It's basically gone, but I just love there's a fish right there. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. Look at him over there, over the top of that grass. Come here, buddy. You are not a big one, but I like you. So fun. I don't even know how many fish we've got to bite right here, but it's been quite a few. If you don't like bites, something's wrong with you. Oh yeah, come on fish. <laughs> oh, get out of there. <laughs> come here, buddy. <laughs> I watched that fish blow up on a dragonfly up there and fired up there on him. He come running out after that thing. That was so cool. It's time to go. We gotta go home. What a great day of fishing. Swim jigging, throwing weightless different baits from the finesse worm from trick sticks and all that and i mean just catching them almost at will if you don't enjoy that something's wrong with you take up ping pong mow the yard go do something else because i promise you i'll be doing this i got my power pulled down stuck in the mud in the bottom of the lake Sitting so still in the wind and the waves Could even be a hurricane I got my power pole down
You know, when I look at the tournaments I've won, probably four or five of the boats that I've won have been on a tube. But I completely gotten away from flipping a tube because nobody, nobody made one soft enough. Big Bite has come with this new tour series of baits. The thing that's probably the most unique is when you look at that bait, the salt just rolls out of it. And to me, that is the reason a fish bites a tube and hangs on to it. This isn't one of those, let's go out and catch some smallmouth tube. This is a let's get it done tube.